Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing another video responding to my hate comments. So check out my first one where I kind of started off down the YouTube comment rabbit hole. I talk about how I started archiving my favorite YouTube comments and responses on my Instagram at a heated mess. I post to my Instagram stories pretty frequently, almost daily at this point. And then I archive my favorites to an Instagram highlight reel called YouTube hate comments or YouTube comments. I think I'm reaching capacity now. I think you're limited to 100 stories. So I'm gonna have to create a second one. We're just gonna continue on. And like I mentioned in my other video, I initially tried to separate the groupings of comments by like the racist comments and then the creepy pervert comments and then the Karen comments. But but it just kind of got all mixed up. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. So Kevin S, he says, maybe you call your people back at home and tell them stop to make counterfeit stuff and you sound kind of ignorant and want to be rich, probably driving BMW 320 LMAO. Anyway, we'll come across, there's a meme that just totally summed up my face when I read these comments and it's like, you're trying to insult me, but it's in the most grammatically incorrect. <laughs> improperly punctuated, improperly spelled comment. You're just, you're embarrassing yourself. Anyway, so I just write, great tips, Kev, thanks for watching. But what's interesting is, first of all, he tells me, call my people back at home. My people back at home in the Philippines are not making counterfeit stuff, okay? We're Filipinos, everyone is a nurse. So what am I gonna tell them to stop making counterfeits? They're, they're busy nursing and singing karaoke and cooking lumpia. You sound kind of ignorant. Okay, you know, I guess he would know. And wanna be rich, probably driving BMW 3 20 LMAO. I don't drive a BMW, but I don't really understand that insult, I guess. So hopefully someone can explain. Love the casual racism, Kev. Thanks, Kev. Oh, I just noticed his YouTube picture is US Marine Corps. So, oh, thanks for your service, Kev. Okay, next up, Richard Stolk writes, wow, that Fendi bag is the ugliest bag I saw in a while. And I wrote back, I love setting records. Thanks for watching, Richard. I really think it's great that my videos can stir up such passion, whether it's hatred or anger or love or whatever. I love breaking records. That's the ugliest bag. I mean, wow, that's the ugliest bag he's seen. I mean, maybe he's seen a lot of bags. And so I hold the record for ugliest bag. I mean, I'm honored. So here we have a series of comments from a username, Common Sense Addict. And I can't even read the comments because I, <laughs> there were so many and they were coming in so fast that I just started, when I would post them to my stories, I would have, you know, whatever funny pictures or, or gifts over it. But the first interaction was, she sits and laughs at those that had fake bags, believing she's so above them. It's obvious as she speaks so condescendingly. Employees at Lux Boutiques, something, something with her I'm so perfect attitude. Why did she ever leave or was she fired? I addressed this in my first hate comments video. A lot of people for some reason assumed I was fired. I was not fired. I worked at LV for many years and then I went to law school and now I have been working in my legal profession for over 10, is it 15 years now? I mean, it's been a long time. A disgruntled employee making videos and spilling all kinds of info about the place you chose to work at instead of gracefully bowing out is not something I'll ever understand. So I responded and said, hi, common sense addict. I left LV to attend law school and I've worked in the legal profession since then. I'll film a Q and A video since you seem very interested in my career. Thanks so much for watching and for your engagement. I have since filmed my Q and A video, so I should probably respond to this person. I'm sure they're waiting to hear about my uh, career. And then in another video, Common Sense Addict once again wrote, and then I just overlaid a gif of a cat with, it's the constant engagement for me. Why do this? Starts with bragging about building the store from the ground up. Did you build it from the ground up and design and work and sewed the collection, something, something. Desperate for attention and validation. So, okay. I wrote, I truly appreciate your incessant engagement on my channel. Thank you. I'm so glad you are enjoying and connecting with my videos. Your multiple comments contain so many questions, which I hope to answer in an upcoming Q&A video. Thanks again for your continuing support. Because again, these are my biggest viewers. These are my repeat viewers, repeat commenters. I really appreciate it. That was the second comment. Oh, another one. Oh my gosh, this was so long. I'll try to read it. If you manage to get through law school, how the meaning of can qualify an engagement. I made my point, so I'm going to go back and forth with you. My opinion stands, especially after your high and mighty self responded with such condescension. I wouldn't dream of working somewhere even three months if I blah, blah, blah. Video talking about something that's no longer a part of their life, yet you've got many of these. Maybe taking on pro bono case would be time better spent. And I responded, thank you so much for your continued support. Speaking of pro bono, 
where I work now, I love our mission. I'm a little tight-lipped about what I do, but again, I work in law and it's a very secure industry. But one of our efforts that we do every year, we do volunteer service. And every year we choose something different. Sometimes I'm on the volunteer committee and I'm helping to organize it. I think we didn't do it last year because of COVID, but it's just amazing. I love how that all my colleagues, we've all went to law school. We all band together. And one initiative we had was to help veterans with getting their veterans disability pay and, and veteran support, helping them fill out the forms, helping them appeal if they were denied their claims. Another effort was we volunteered at a charity that helps people get back on their feet it provides them with work clothes we help with their resume help with job interview skills so that they can get back out onto the workforce these are often people who have been homeless who have been in prison and are getting out and trying to get their life back together former drug addicts and yeah we do pro bono stuff <laughs> so anyway that's a great idea thanks common sense addict it's the encyclopedia length responses and community interaction for me oh one more time i knew you'd come back with some diluted reply instead of an intelligent comment my comments were nothing but an expression of support but you keep something whatever you want the legal eagle i am so appreciative of your never-ending engagement it really helps my channel thank you again for your support truly and my comment it's the complimentary nickname and missed sarcasm for me legal eagle by the way speaking of eagles so in my office, we have this function and I am in charge of this function. So at one point we were getting tons of these legal reviews. And so I came up with the Metrics Eagle. So I went out and bought an eagle like figurine statue and I wrote it, the Metrics Eagle. I you know printed out a, a label for it and whoever on my team could get through the most legal reviews <laughs> would be awarded the Metrics Eagle. So anyway, I thought that was interesting, but yeah, legal eagle. Thanks, great nickname. Oh, they wrote back. I mean, this is, I think it's, oh here, comment number five. Why don't you try answering a single question instead of something like an idiot? I'm starting to doubt you got an education or a career based on how much time spent posting the same idiotic responses. You truly are something and something being questioned about her so-called. Please don't leave another delusional comment. So unfortunately, this came up in my YouTube filtered comments. So YouTube has an automatic filter for comments that contain curses and, you know, racial slurs or URL website links because they don't, you know, to prevent spammers and bots. So that unfortunately was filtered. So I couldn't respond, but I would have loved to respond with what this person thinks is a delusional comment. <laughs> so this next one isn't a comment, but it just reminded me of generally all my comments. It's a meme and this caption working in retail. Me, hey, customer, I wish you would just effing die. <laughs> me, okay, let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, those are my comments for sure. I thought that was so funny. And so I followed up with a poll asking people, what's the meanest comment you ever got on YouTube IG? And it was so eye-opening because it just shows, I mean, how crazy some people are. People were responding with really mean and rude and racist comments that they were receiving also on social media. So V Alvar, as someone who can afford authentic designer bags, I don't appreciate essays that are snobby and entitled. Never understood why bottom of the totem pole salespeople are so stuck up and condescending, yikes. And I wrote, thanks for watching. And this person comment replied back. My comment went way over your head, dear. And I replied again, I truly appreciate your continuing engagement. Really helps my channel, thank you. Once again, when people gripe about YouTubers who seem condescending and stuck up, but then in the same comment, they're saying that person is the bottom of a totem pole. I mean, in this interaction, who is the one that's being kind of classist and elitist, right? It's so funny when they preface these comments with, as someone who can afford authentic designer bags. I mean, what does it matter if you can afford authentic designer bags? Bags. You can buy whatever you want, you know, you can buy counterfeits if you want, that's fine. Okay, this was funny. And this has to be a troll because look at the username. The username is Karen McPrivilege. The picture is that typical Karen haircut. She writes, God, you are such a condescending judgmental snob. I would never look at a woman's handbag and judge her for it. Let me switch the judgment on you for a minute. You're a retail worker, not a CEO or making six figures. Drop the attitude, sweetie, and humble yourself. <laughs> How funny. First of all, I am making six figures, but that's okay. I just thought this was really funny because they literally, I mean, it had to be a joke, Karen McPrivilege. So, okay. So I definitely would categorize this as one of my Karen commenters. She hasn't reappeared though. I was really looking forward to another appearance from her, but Karen McPrivilege, is that you? Let me know. This one was short. Be you today writes, you are so effing fake. <laughs> and I put a duck over the curse word. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. It was a Friday. 
Uh, John Richardson writes, you seem like a manipulative bitch. And I don't know if I responded. I just told him, you know, have a blessed day, John Richardson. He seems like he's angry, maybe. Maybe he was manipulated by someone in his life, a woman, and he wants to take it out on strange women that he has never met on YouTube. So I hope he gets over that pain. He seems to have some anger and is projecting it onto complete strangers on YouTube. So here's a here's a racist one. Seriously, you are just a sales girl at LV, not the owner. Why are you rolling your eyes and making faces? It's a personal choice, whatever someone wants to wear. Why are you judging? And then you will call out others racist when they call you Asian or Chinese or whatever. What exactly are you doing? So I wrote back, I thought I was the owner. Thanks for clarifying and thanks so much for watching and engaging. And then they wrote back, change your name to Chinese mess. <laughs> Great suggestion. Thanks for the continuing engagement. So yeah, Chinese mess. I mean, that would be a great name if I were Chinese. I'm not Chinese though. I am Filipino. I could put Filipino mess. My name, a heated mess, by the way, I got from the movie Pitch Perfect 2. So if you have watched that movie, that's where that reference came from. Oh, another reference to me being Asian. King Kong Unconscious writes, why are you so jealous of replicas? You are not white, you are Asian. I wrote, good to know. Thanks so much for watching. And he wrote back, no problem. First of all, how am I jealous of replicas? What is it that replicas have that I am jealous of that I want of that replica? You are not white. Yes, that's correct. I'm not white. You are Asian. That is also correct. So it's great. This reminds me of when my kids are reading, you know, they're at that, they're at that age where they're reading and my older son, he's going into fifth grade. He needs to not just be able to read, but also comprehend and understand the deeper meanings of stories and pick out themes, you know, within the within the story. So when he does that correctly, I give him positive feedback. And so in this case, King Kong Unconscious very correctly states, you are not white, you are Asian. I never claim to be otherwise, <laughs> but thank you. So I, you know, it, it's one of those instances where I'm just like, yes, that's correct. I guess I just feels like I'm talking to my 10 year old son. This one was interesting, Mopar family. I got my mother-in-law one for her B-Day, a checker one, paid $1,800 for it, was least he hideous looking bags they had, LV all over, bag looks tacky, ugly as purses, think people just wanna wear Liberace bags. The only thing I could pick up from that one mess of a comment was Liberace. And if you have seen Behind the Candelabra, that was an amazing movie, I definitely recommend it. <laughs> so I wrote back and said, Liberace was such a talented musician, thanks for watching. And I asked, and I pulled people and asked if they saw Behind the Candelabra. Go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. This one was interesting. So in my videos, you know, obviously I used to work for LV. That's a lot of my videos I talk about working for LV. This person, I am Lana, writes, I worked for LV Boutique in Monaco and I never heard that you could participate in Chanel or Dior sales or use their staff online shopping. It does not exist. And I wrote, when I worked at an LV Boutique within a department store that also had a Chanel Boutique, we were permitted to shop their employee sales. So yes, it very much did exist. <laughs> Thanks for watching. It's one of those situations where just because you did not personally experience something, you cannot fathom that exists for other people. And that is obviously the case here because I obviously did benefit from these discounts. This was in my LV employment perks and discounts benefits video. I mentioned that because I worked at one point at an LV boutique within a department store, we were graciously afforded the opportunity to shop the Chanel employee sale. And that actually was where I bought my first Chanel bag. And it's actually right there, if you can see it. That Chanel, it's the uh, Cambone bag. So yeah, it definitely did exist. <laughs> This next comment made me a little sad. You know, we all have our priorities. Anna Mae De Pedro writes, there's nothing wrong of having a fake or cheap bag. The most important is the amount of money inside your bag. You're wearing an original LV bag, but you're broke and you're having a lot of loans because of it. Duh, nonsense. So I wrote back, I think the most important thing is family, but we all have our priorities. Thanks for watching. I never would judge a person's situation. Anna, maybe she decided not to have a family or you know, maybe she doesn't have kids and maybe she lost her family. And if her priority is the amount of money inside her bag, that's her life and that's what she chooses to prioritize. But to offer this blanket statement, the most important is the amount of money inside your bag, that is not the most important. Again, for me and maybe for some other people, I think the most important thing to me is my family. So again, we all have our priorities. Anna prioritizes money and I prioritize my family. Okay, this one was funny. Andrew Jackson writes, you are extremely cocky and talk in a very rude manner. So I responded, you're my fifth favorite US president. Congrats on being the face of the $20 bill and thanks for watching. <laughs> so he wrote back, 
I'm also a slave owner. <laughs> And I responded, yikes, well, I hope you learned the error of your ways. Now, if there's one thing you might not know about me, politics is my passion. I don't get into politics on my channel because it's very divisive, but if a former US president, whether or not he owns slaves, comments on your YouTube channel, I mean, I just wanted to let him know. How many people do you know are on the face of US currency? Okay, this next one was so confusing. Vishnu Athena Dufale, number four. I, I can't even, I'll post it here, I'll try to read it. So what if people buy fake bags? That's all they can afford. Not all people can afford expensive things like you, so don't misjudge them. They happy for having their fake bags or things, and most especially, they worked hard till zingle penny of it. I wrote back, they sure can spend every zingle penny on counterfeits as long as they don't insist LV repair it. Thanks so much for watching. So again, that is on my counterfeit bag video and people can wear whatever they want. I In that video, I never said that you cannot buy counterfeits. The entire video was me explaining what happens when customers bring in counterfeit bags and often want them to be repaired. So wear whatever you want. Just don't expect LV to repair it if it's a counterfeit. So here's a returning fan. DB writes, right? She was probably just a sales associate too, lowest rung on the ladder. And I wrote, I truly appreciate your continuing incessant engagement in multiple views. And this, and they replied, I bet you need the two cents you'll get from it. I wrote, not how it works, but I love how supportive you are. Okay, let me know when you finally reach one cents for my engagement here. I said, that's six or seven comments from you within 10 minutes. You are in the running as my number one fan. And they wrote back again, I bet that's why your overblown narcissistic ego had to tell itself. I bet you couldn't stand looking at that number. Whatever helps you sleep at night, have a great day. And I wrote back, are you flirting with me? <laughs> um, and they wrote back again, super cruel, nothing luxury about these bags. They have a lot of blood that had to be shed to make them. And I res responded and I congratulated him. Wow, eight comments on one video. You are officially my biggest fan today. Here is your trophy. And then they couldn't help themselves. They wrote again, a whole bunch of things. She probably makes a few cents from ads. Money can't buy anyone taste. Did you see that tacky, hideous denim bag? What the F was that? Poor crocodiles, alligators, chinchillas, minks, cows, lambs, all slaughtered, electrocuted, and skinned in the name of vanity. I couldn't care less about this arrogant woman, but the fact people pay so much for cruelty and on top of that to impress other fake B and still look tacky in the end, yikes. Capitalism, people will wear garbage bags as long as they say LV, Dior, Gucci. Make sure to keep ad block on too, by the way. So what stood out to me is this person in the middle of this long ninth comment on one video within an hour writes, I couldn't care less about this arrogant woman. So I responded just to that point, you couldn't care less about me, but this is your 10th or 11th comment on just this video alone. My own mom doesn't reply that frequently. Thanks for being my most fervent supporter. Yeah, I mean, you know, my mom is in the Philippines and so we have a big time zone difference between us and so we can't always go back and forth as much as I would like. But these commenters, I mean, I it's like I speak to them more frequently than my own mom. Okay, here's the one that I mentioned. Friends, I have discovered my new patron saint, Klaus Meijer. I see that you have made three spelling mistakes. Last words of Marquis de Favre after reading his death sentence before being hanged, 1790. Me reading my YouTube hate comments. So yeah, when people try to insult me, but then they spell insult incorrectly. I'm gonna skip ahead to my crowning achievement. <laughs> in comments. So this person, by the way, commented on my YouTube video and the, I don't know if the YouTube filter caught it, but he wrote, my blank is a heated mess and it is involving male anatomy. And I didn't respond. For those guys, you don't want to encourage that. So he took to my Instagram and DM'd me because I wasn't commenting on his YouTube comments and sent me an unsolicited a D picture and he wrote, this is a heated mess, period. When someone that I don't follow messages me, it automatically goes to, you know, like the junk folder or something. And so images are blocked. It says images sent in message requests are covered. Tap to see blurred image. And I tapped and it was a disgusting, <laughs> gross D pic. And so I posted it to my stories and I said unsolicited tiny D pic. And I responded with what I thought was such a clever gag. And I found this first online, like some meme page posted this, where this person in response to an unsolicited D pic wrote back what looks like an automated message. And I'll read it to you. But it says, this is an automated message generated by the Instagram team. Your image has been found to be a violation of 42 USC 1283. 2020. An image you sent has been scanned by your AI bot and was flagged as an unsolicited picture. 
Your electronic device IP and Instagram account are scheduled to be reported to the police. Our bot is currently in beta testing. Sometimes it makes mistakes. If you believe this message was an error, reply help. Otherwise, you will be contacted by your local authorities within 24 hours. And so in the meme, when this person first replied with this message, the creepy guy wrote back and said, help. No, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> And he just panicked. So I tweaked the message a little bit so that it was relevant to my, to Instagram. I think it was initially for Twitter or something. So I changed it to Instagram and oh my gosh, it was hilarious. He immediately unsent his messages because on Instagram you can, you can unsend your message, but the damage was done. I had already screenshotted everything. So yeah, he unsent his message and I never heard from him again, but he still follows me. So I thought that was a good response. After that, people <laughs> messaged me and they're like, oh my God, I need that message. So I copied and pasted it for them. So please feel free to use that language when you are responding to someone. By the way, the US statute is not real. I don't think it's relevant to this. I looked it up and at least the 1283 statute, um, it looked like that was repealed. So it has nothing to do with this, but people just get so scared. So I think that's a great response to these unsolicited D pics. And so with that, I'm going to wrap up this latest round of my YouTube hate comments. Again, check out my Instagram at a heated mess and I will always post new hate comments. So if you have a YouTube channel or Instagram, let me know what your hate comments are. Let me know how you would respond to these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye.